This video is for Engage New York 6th grade, Module 1, Lesson 3. Lesson 3 is about equivalent ratios. So go ahead and take a second to think about what does equivalent ratios mean? What are equivalent ratios? Equivalent it should be a word that you're familiar with. It's something that we talked a lot about in 6th grade in fifth grade, equivalent means equal. So if there are equivalent ratios, it's more than one ratio with the same value. So if they're reduced to simplest terms, they're gonna have the same value. Um, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna need the classwork papers for lesson number three. And exercise number one says to write a story problem about a ratio. A story problem should look very much like a ratio relationship. It gives you all of the information so that you're able to write a ratio in a specific order that matches the information in the story problem. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes now. Go ahead and write a story problem for exercise number one. Pause the video and then unpause when you're finished. The ratio that you could have used for a story problem, although you don't have to, it could be about anything, could be something like in the classroom, there are 25 chairs and seven tables. What is the ratio of chairs to tables? I can easy, easily write a ratio that matches the information that's given and in this specific order. So the ratio of chairs to tables would be 25 to 7. And that is actually what you would write for answer B. For on that first exercise, it asks you to write the story problem. So there's the first part. And then the next area asks you to write that ratio in two different forms. Now form means you're writing the exact same ratio, but just using a different setup. At this point, we've only learned two forms for writing a ratio. The numbers stay in the same order, one form uses the word two, one form uses a colon. So the, so the next section they're asking you to write the ratio using two forms. These are the only two forms that are acceptable and they need to match the information in the story problem. Now, skip on down to exercise number two. Read the description of that information. You shouldn't be writing anything right now, you're just reading. Think who it's talking about, what information are they giving you? Why would they need, why do they need to tell you that information and how you could use it? Okay, underneath that information is a large area. Right now, I want you to draw a line breaking that area into two equal parts. On the left side of the line, we are going to create a ratio table about that information. A ratio table is just a way to organize equivalent fractions, or I'm sorry, equivalent ratios. So in, for exercise number two, it gives you the names of two people, Shani and Mel. And they need ribbon for a project. What is the ratio of Shani's ribbon to Mel's ribbon? And there it says that Shani has seven, the ratio is seven to three. Seven to three. Does it tell us? Okay, it says inches. So seven inches to three inches. That does not necessarily matter. The important part is that it's seven to three. Well, what if actually their ribbon, Shani's ribbon was longer than seven inches? What 
is a what's a value that Shani's ribbon could be that's longer than seven inches, but we could keep the seven to three ratio. I hope you were able to come up with 14 to 6. Shani's ribbon could be 14 inches and Mel's could be 6 inches and they would still have a 7 to 3 ratio. Come up with another with a longer value of ribbon but still keeping the 7 to 3 ratio. Hopefully you were able to come up with 21 to nine. 21 to nine, although is longer than seven to seven and three, it still keeps the seven to three ratio. So this ratio table has equivalent fractions. All of these fractions are equal to each other. They can all be reduced to seven to three, but give us different lengths for their ribbon. Now, on this half, we are going to use the same information to create a tape diagram. A tape diagram is another problem solving strategy and one that you may have used before in earlier grades. A tape diagram is kind of a fancy word for a rectangle with equal parts. We need to go back to our word problem and we know the ratio is 7 to 3 for Shani to Met. So I am going to create a rectangle with seven equal parts for Shannon. Okay, so here's the rectangle. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. This is for Shani's ribbon. Now Mel, she has three equal parts. I cannot make my rectangle the same size for Shannon because it doesn't matter how long the tape diagram is, the parts, each part has to be equal. So the easiest thing to do is count off three parts and just ma match those right up. So now I have a tape diagram for Mel that's broken into three equal parts and the parts are equal. So now that we have our tape diagram, and we know that all of the parts are equal. If Shani's ribbon is seven inches long, how much is each section worth? How much is each of the equal parts worth? They are all worth one inch. One inch, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. If these units are worth one inch, then Mel's units are also worth one inch. If Shani's ribbon is seven inches long, Mel's ribbon must be three inches long. Does everyone, do you understand how we came up with those, the unit amounts? Now, we can change that. The units do have to be equal, but they don't always have to be worth one. Let's say in this case, each of the units are worth two meters. If each of these units is worth two meters, how long is Shani's ribbon? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Shani's ribbon would be 14 meters long. If that is worth two meters, then these are also two meters. So Mel's ribbon would be two, four, six meters long. Now, 14 to six is an equivalent ratio seven to three, which we already know from our ratio table. So, you're, so you might be wondering, why might I use a tape diagram or versus a ratio table? When is a good idea to use both? How can you decide which one to use? A ratio table is, if, is good to use if you're just using the smaller numbers or if you just have a few sections to go. On this, on a tape diagram, we can make each unit worth as much as we like. So I could make this worth five miles. 
So then Shani's ribbon would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 miles long. And Mel's would be 5, 10, 15 miles long. So as you can see, 35 to 15 is the same as an equivalent ratio as 7 to 3, but it might have taken us a long time to get to that on the ratio table. So the smaller values are better on a ratio table, larger values are better for a table. Okay, moving on to exercise number three. It's talking about Mason and Laney are running laps to train for a long distance running team. I want you to make a tape diagram to answer some questions. The first thing we need to know is the information it gives us where, right under exercise number three. It says the, the ratio of the number of laps Mason runs to the number of laps Laney runs is two to three. So we need to know that Mason to Laney is two to three. This is exercise number three, question A. Question A is asking, if Mason runs four miles, how far did Laney run? When it starts giving us these other values, it's going to be difficult to remember how to make our tape diagram. So always remember, the number of units in the tape diagram matches your ratio. So I should have two units for Mason, and three units for Laney. Mason to Laney, Mason to Laney. These numbers match my ratio. Now I can go back and get the extra information from the problem. It said if Mason ran four miles, how many miles did Laney run? Okay. So we know the value of Mason's two parts together equals four miles. And these are equal parts. So how can I break four miles into two equal parts? Four miles broken into two equal parts is two miles each. Because all of these units are equal, these must also be two miles. So if Mason ran four miles, Laney ran two, four, six. That answers the question for exercise 3A. Okay, go ahead and try to answer exercise 3B on your own. Push pause until you have finished that. Okay, for exercise 3B, it says, if Laney ran 930 meters, how far did Mason run? So I'm going to go back to my ratio so that I can draw my tape diagram. Mason is 2. Laney is 3. That does not change. It has to match my ratio. Now it gives me Laney has ran 930 meters. So this is the point where I need to find the value of each unit. Laney has three units, all of them are equal, so I need to break 930 meters into three equal parts. What operation do we use for breaking into equal parts? Hopefully you said division. So I'll take 930 and break it into three equal parts using D, M, S, C, B. 9 goes into 3 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Check. Is 0 less than 3? It is, so I can bring down. 3 goes into 3 equal groups 1 time. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Check. Is 0 less than 3? Bring down. 0 goes into 3 equal groups 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Check, is zero less than three? Yes, nothing to bring down, nothing to bring up. 930 broken into three equal groups is 310. 
So 310 meters is the value of each unit. Now, because these units are equal, 